The Vitra Design Museum emerged out of um, the company Vitra's initiative in the late 1980s and at that time Vitra was already quite a successful and, and renowned design company. They had worked with Charles and Ray Eames, with Werner Panton, with a lot of international designers since the 1960s. Um, and, uh, Still today, of course, Vitra is an international big um, brand within the design world, but the museum has um, evolved very separately. So we're a private foundation uh, that has been founded in the late 1980s, and we are collecting um, objects in our collection of furniture design, which um, include a few Vitra pieces, but we go far beyond uh, Vitra products, so we don't see ourselves as a corporate museum. We're an independent museum looking at the history of design um, and with our temporary exhibitions um, we look at design with a very wide scope. So we look also at fashion, at architecture, at relations to the arts, etc. But our collection is focused on furniture design and the interior. And the collection ranges or includes pieces that start from the late 18th century until today. So it's more than 200 years that are um, represented in the collection. And um, some of the famous pieces that are included is of course um, the famous uh, Tonnet Bentwood chairs um, in the 19th century. First pieces to be mass manufactured and an industrial scale. Then we have, of course, pieces from classic modernism, post-war pieces by Charles and Ray Eames, um, Anna Jacobsen, a lot of Scandinavian designers, Italian radical designers. And it ranges until today, um, where we collect pieces that are digitally manufactured, 3D printed. So we always try to look on what is next in the design. What also has to be said about the collection is um, that it is one of the most significant probably in the world of furniture design, so there's few other museums who have a similar wide range of pieces and also in that quality, um, because the collection includes on the one hand, um, of course, many of the famous icons. And sometimes these icons are really rare or they have been produced only in very small quantities, like. Sometimes these were even one-offs or even just prototypes that have never gone into a, uh, a serial uh, production. You know, the term of design is very often linked to a definition of design as an industrial practice. Design happens when there is a, a mass manufacturer and the designer works for industry. I think today the separation of industry and crafts does no longer work. Um, because if we look back in the history also in our collection, we see that designers have always also worked with craft methods, even when they worked in a so-called industrial context. So the, the collection is very interesting to understand what is design um, and, and uh, what can be um, a relevant definition of design. And we see that design can either focus on mass manufacturing and making a piece that is affordable for as many people as possible. Um, but design can also be to do a very experimental piece that is very far ahead of its time. And for that you maybe need a very unusual technique. It may be very expensive, but maybe you open a new door and other designers in the future will use it to do um, more affordable pieces. So we see that innovation happens on many different layers and this can be very well seen in the history of furniture design.